Mobile development is pretty straightforward in that you really only need your computer and a phone to do your testing. And that's only once you hit the limits of what you can do with your simulator. But there's definitely a couple accessories that can make your life a lot easier and pleasant as a mobile developer that might be interesting to look into. Let's take a look at them. First, I want to briefly thank this video's sponsor. If you're tired of using boring old Zoom, you should take a look at Tilda. Tilda lets you create meetings with useful collaborative tools to make your meetings more engaging and more fun. It's built by creative people and with features that have creative people in mind. Give it a try with the link in the description below. It's free and doesn't even require an account. Number one, like you've seen in other videos, you know I think keeping good ergonomics while working as a developer is super important. Because of that, I think it's worth looking into phone holder solutions that make it better for your posture when you need to test on your physical device. When working on features that require my phone to test, if I don't use one, I end up bending over to use the phone on the desk the whole day, and it's definitely not the greatest for my neck or my back. Using something as simple as a small stand that lets your phone stay upright will help you avoid some of that. But if you want to go even further, you can even attach a phone holder to a basic boom arm attached to your desk. This way you can easily customize where your phone sits when you're debugging and testing, and thus make sure that you can always keep the most comfortable position. Number two, better quality USB cables. Especially as an iOS developer, it's no secret to anyone that the basic iPhone cables are, at best, a ticking time bomb just waiting to break. And it's incredibly frustrating to be working and testing on your physical device and have to deal with a cable that's just malfunctioning or that just completely stops working one day. Better quality cables that are more sturdy are a worthy investment at a really low cost. They last orders of magnitude longer than the basic Apple cables, so you can just completely forget about them and focus on the important stuff. I've personally used Anchor cables the most, but just look into any third-party options with good reviews that focus on sturdiness and longevity and you should be better off. Number three, consider completely tossing the USB cable from your setups, at least to some extent, and try using a wireless charger at your desk. Through constant plugging in and unplugging of cables, my lightning port inevitably ends up being a complete mess that disconnects frequently. So whenever I can use the wireless debugging option on my phone, because I'm working on something where latency doesn't matter as much, I'll use my wireless charger and try to save my poor lightning port so it can last a little bit longer. It's not always possible, but I definitely feel like it's helping get more life out of my testing devices which pays off nicely in the end. Number four, get yourself a power bank. Here's the thing, one of the most amazing things about development for mobile platforms is that they allow you to create tools and products that can be used while you're out and about. Maybe something that uses your GPS or your camera when you're out in nature. Whatever it might be, the biggest part of your work is obviously done at your computer where you have access to things to charge your phone, so it's no problem there, but when you finally have a working prototype and you want to go out and test it and all its special use cases, it's great to be able to bring a power bank along so you can be certain your tests won't be cut short because you need to go back home or find a place to charge your phone. And let's be honest, especially when you're working on a first pass on a project that uses tools like the GPS or the camera, they're usually not very efficient and just drain your battery extremely quickly because you haven't gone back to optimize things. A battery bank in those situations just make it a lot simpler to get the first pass tested before you go back and optimize things. Alright, I hope you appreciated these couple ideas that can make your life a little bit easier or more enjoyable as a software and mobile developer. I hope you look into them and I hope this was useful to you all. I'll see you all in the next video and until then, take care.